having the last possession, making the final shot. What made the difference for them tonight, you think? Uh, I mean, I think, you know, it was more than us. You know, I didn't like the way we approached the, the start of the game. Um, we kind of thought we could ease into it. and They jumped on us early. Thankfully, we were able to climb back and, uh, you know, try to score at the end of the quarter. But, uh, you know, then we start the third the same way. So just our overall approach was, I thought, a little lackadaisical. Um, and, you know, it, it's just, you know, you're fighting human nature. I don't know. But you know, we cannot uh, look at anyone's record or, you know, how many games they've lost in a row, whatever that may be. We're in no position to do that. Um, so I think just our overall approach to start was not where it should have been. Was that offense, defense, both? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, and then their, their switching gave us some issue. Um, we kind of got static at times and uh, lacked a little ball movement. I think we, we scored 111 points and had 18 assists. So yeah, we've seen the 30 plus assist nights, how that looks. And, and, and that's what uh, you know, we aim to do every night. It's not going to happen, but um, we, we kind of fell into that, you know, trying to play one on one a little too much. What did you see on the the fouls for Bradley Beal and uh, kind of what I mean, changed about the approach after yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, I, I could argue that they were bad calls. I, it, it's tough to say without watching the film. Um, you know, the, the, those are very unfortunate because when it happens and it take, kind of takes your best player out of the game, you know, maybe that affects his uh, aggressiveness toward the rim. Um, but, you know, not having him out there late is a, is a huge is a huge loss. When an opponent switches everything, how would you like to see your offense uh, counteract that? Well, we've seen it, and uh, we've done a decent job at times where, um, you know, you, you continue to keep energy in the ball. Uh, where it just doesn't become one-on-one. -on -one. And We had some good moments where there's a secondary screen, there's a slip, and just that little bit of movement causes some confusion, um, and now it opens up driving lanes. Uh, but, you know, once you get into the paint, now you, now you can make the appropriate reads, but Trying to play one on one is difficult as it is, but uh, when we stagnate him, I think we're helping the defense. How did uh, your team respond when Brad did foul out with a significant portion of time left? Well, I thought they responded well. I mean, and, you know, you're trying to figure it out a little bit, uh, you know, playing small and you know, trying to stay afloat. But uh, I give them credit that they, they keep they kept fighting. We gave ourselves a chance. Obviously, we, we don't ever want to find ourselves in that type of situation, but we give ourselves a chance. How tough is it strategically when you're just playing with six guys essentially down the stretch? Um, well, it's it is what it is. I mean, it's not it's never ideal, but um, it is difficult. You know, we're trying to organize guys who are playing out of position, and um, you know, you're trying to give them something that they can feel com comfortable with knowing the team's going to, you know, switch and, and take things away. So if you don't have a, uh, a dominant, you know, offensive threat on the floor, then once again, you have to move the ball. I'm not sure if you've had the opportunity to, to watch video of the final play. I assume you haven't, but your initial impressions, uh, did you just see another excellent shot by an opponent there on the, on Porter's three? I thought it was well well defended. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we talked about whether to go hit, hit it and take the ball out of his hands, um, you know, late. Um, but we said, you know, just trust the defender. And, you know, it stinks because it seems to have happened a little too often this in the last week or two. But um, I thought it was well defended and made, made a tough shot. I know the the team said that Davis has a left ankle sprain have you, or a left foot sprain. Excuse me. Have you, have you talked to him and how is he feeling? And how tough is that to see him go out, especially after the last couple of games? Yeah, I mean, it's very hard because once again, you know, one of your rotation guys goes down, guy stretches the floor for us, and you know, he's he's made shots, um, shooting it much better as of late. So that part's frustrating, and you feel for him because he's, you know, he's a big part of what we do. Um, I have not talked to him, you know, just briefly. Um, you know, in the locker room before coming out here. And I don't know the severity of it, but, you know, I know he's he, he would have tried to play if he could. So uh, I'm hoping it's not significant. And, you know, you kind of mentioned the approach early on. I know you guys had 10 turnovers in the first half. Is there anything you can single out you can point to and say that was kind of the problem early on? No, I just thought, you know, um, didn't play with a lot of pop, a lot of energy. Um, you know, on either end, there were a lot of coverage mistakes, you know, the lack of communication. Um, but, you know, I think you, you combine all those things and, you know, the they were in attack mode. We knew that. 
So, you know, 62 points in the paint. They, they shot 30 plus free throws. Um, you know, obviously we we're concerned about the three, but, you know, that, that all starts with the paint and uh, the offensive rebounds. So it, it goes on and on and on. Uh, those are areas that we talked about controlling and we didn't do it tonight. Just um, wanted to get your take on uh, KCP's game and what allowed him to get going. Well, you know, I think he's, uh, you know, we ask a lot of him on the defensive end and he kind of finds his rhythm in the flow. Um, obviously, you know, you can run things to target him ATOs and, you know, he's, he's given uh, made big shots, you know, all season, but, um, you know, I just like, I like the, I just like the way he, he approaches it, you know, where he thinks, um, he doesn't press. He doesn't try to do too much. Uh, I know at times he gets frustrated because he feels like he's not quite involved as much as he, as he should, but he finds his way. Um, and I think, you know, if, when we play the right way, the ball finds him and he steps up and makes shots. Sorry, Neil. Hey, Coach. Did you feel that your team – potentially looked at the Rockets record and thought that, okay, you know, maybe we can just get this win easily. And that's maybe what contributed to the slow loss, the slow start in the loss. Uh, I don't know that for, for certain. Um, that's just my, my feel. I don't know if it was, you know, looking at their record per se, but just, you know, uh, I think just overall mindset when, when you play teams, that, you know, have struggled, that, you know, you think you can just ease your way into, into the game and, you know, it'll just come, come easy. Um, and I think you, you set yourself up when you do that. Ava? Hey, Wes. Um, when you guys are relying on dudes who have played a ton of minutes over the past couple of games just because of the, the shorthanded roster, what are ways that you try to tell your guys, here's how you can make things a little bit easier on yourself in games and, and maybe get it, is it about sticking with the defense and just not getting in a hole? Well, I mean, I think we can start there because that's the one constant, you know, that, that shouldn't, that shouldn't change much, you know, and I, you know, we didn't do a very good job, you know, containing. I thought we allowed guys to play their, their, their strength at times, get downhill. Um, and, and I give Houston credit. They're very aggressive and they, they got to where they wanted to go. Um, but I think you, you use film. Um, you can't do a lot on, on your feet, obviously, you know, after a game like this where guys log heavy minutes, um, you know, with a short rotation, we'll always obviously be able to implement uh, and reintegrate, you know, some of the, the guys who are coming out of protocol, which is terrific, gives you some reinforcements and, and core guys back. But for those guys who have logged heavy minutes, it's, uh, you know, it's film, it's walkthroughs, uh, it's group or individual, you know, things that we can do. Um, just to kind of keep hitting, keep teaching, um, you know, so they can understand the why, you know, why things went the way they did, you know, why we want to stay away from these situations. But it's just tough to do, uh, you know, live reps at, at this point. And with those guys who have been, uh, you know, guys like Kuz and Corey, even who's been playing more minutes, do you and the coaching staff try to shave off minutes towards the end of the season if you can? Like, is there a way that you guys try to figure out how to balance that out over a season, or do you just kind of have to do what you have to do? Well, this has been a tough stretch because I, we, we've been forced to kind of do what we have to do to stay afloat. Um, you know, when we're whole, we try to map out minutes. Uh, not only per game and, you know, the rotation, you know, sub pattern and fouls and stuff dictate sometimes otherwise, but um, you kind of look at the aggregate, you know, whether it's a, a week or five games, 10 games to try and get a number that's suitable. At times it's going to be a little higher. Um, you read the game and if you need to go for it, you go for it. You, you can't worry about, it. you know, what tomorrow brings. You just want to get the game, you know, tonight. So, um, but, you know, this can, the way, the way we've been able to play shorthanded, and I think it's uh, it is what it is, and a byproduct of uh, who we have. Wayne, hey, coach, with a young team like Houston, the scrappy on the road. When at what quarter could you feel like they were starting to gain some confidence? Uh, you know, I thought early in the third. I mean, you know, we we played them. You know, pr pretty well. You know, into the first uh, first first quarter, um, they kind of created some distance in the second. But the, the third, I thought, was you know where they really started to feel confident, felt like they they could you know take the game. So uh, just our approach to start the game in the first quarter, and obviously the you know, start of the second half. 
and, and I know you mentioned it earlier before, you say no one feels sorry for you, everyone's going through it. But with the protocols and, you know, lineup changing, just how, just how difficult can it be just to manage that? I mean, it's challenging. I mean, it's, we, we talked about it. No, no one wants to have to go through this. A lot of teams have had to deal with it and we're trying to manage it as best we can. Um, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. We're kind of coming to the end of this stretch, but, you know, it, it, you just have to kind of do the best you can and, and be informed with, you know, how the protocols shake out. Um, at times those change um, and how those changes affect who we have and, and who might be available in the testing times. So all of it is, is, is taxing, not just my, on myself, but, you know, players, you know, coming back at night to test and do this. And, but, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, we, we've tried to get through this and hopefully we have, but um, we still have a game to play. We have a job to do. And, you know, tonight I, don't, I didn't think we did it as, as well as we should have. There you go. There's one last question with Josh in the room. What? In case you don't practice tomorrow, I'd like to ask this now, please. Uh, have you got any guess or inkling as to whether uh, Montrez has, uh, or any of your other players who are in the protocol might be on the cusp of returning? I believe, uh, you know, Trez, for example, is close. Um, I don't know the exact status. I think it might be another day or two, but I'm hoping tomorrow we'll have some clarity. Um, and if things go go well, hopefully he'll, he will get out tomorrow, but I, I can't say that with certainty. How exhausting and frustrating is this one, uh, the second time in three games uh, where a team made a superlative shot late to really make the difference? I mean, it's unfortunate. Um, you know, Kevin Porter made a hell of a shot. Um, you know, great defense. You know, just, you know, sometimes good players make um, big time shots. So, um, obviously, throughout the game, you know, it was tough. But we had other circumstances out there, but, um, you know, you know, it's just a tough one. Obviously, the shot made the difference in the end. But as you look back on the game, kind of what do you lament about how the way, way you guys played that you wish could have gone differently? I mean, there's a bunch of things. I mean, there's a lot of things that we could, could we could have control and a lot of things that uh, we just couldn't control um, at the end of the day. Um, I mean, that's just the game of basketball. Sometimes it happens like that. Um, you know, we could have been better. You know, I could have been better. I came out really sluggish. Uh, yeah, it's just tough. It's tough. I don't know if you've had circumstances like this before. You've had to play this many minutes, but what's it like knowing, you know, you're going to be part of a, a short rotation and then you lose Davis Bertans and just the, the workload that you guys are having to deal with right now? I mean, it's no issue. I mean, um, you want to be out there as much as you can. Um, you know, the tough part is, you know, just, you know, just you know, knowing that you're going to play a lot of minutes, trying to stay off your feet as much as possible, um, you know, when you're not playing, you know, to be in the game and, you know, have energy, so. And what was, uh, you know, different about maybe the offense tonight? You guys have uh, been one of the better offenses in the league going back like six, seven games. Uh, honestly, I thought it was fine. I mean, we just didn't hit shots, you know. Um, I can't go 0 for 8. You know, I had a tough night shooting it from three, but, you know, I'm still confident. I know you know, some of those rim outs and some look good to me. So, um and, and that goes for the rest of the guys. You know, we just had a you know, tough night shooting the ball. Uh, we hit two threes. We're not in that situation. So, um, I mean, that's just the uh, silver line right there. So, When a team switches so heavily as the Rockets did, what's the best way to counteract that and uh, play up to, aside from hitting shots, I get that. Uh, to play to the offense's potential? You know, just uh, ball movement, player movement, uh, slips to the rim, um, finding a mismatch and attacking it. Um, or, you know, off the switch, just drive them. Um, and, I, you know, I think for the most part, you know, I mean, at least from playing it didn't feel, feel bad. Um, you know, I'll, I'll probably watch the film and see how it goes. But... You know, offensively, I don't think that was the issue. I think it was defensively, um, and obviously missing, you know, some 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 big shots. So, mm -hmm. 
Ava? Um, you've told us about what it's like to return from protocols and the adjustments that are needed there, but for the guys who are on the floor and who've kind of been playing, do you have to make any adjustments or I guess have any awareness of players who have just come back and it's their first game? Like you have to remember like, oh, right, how will might not have the same wind he usually does or something like that? Yeah, I mean, 100%. Um, I remember when I came out of uh, protocol, I had a rough three games um, following that from a conditioning standpoint and I had COVID, so... Um, you know, I was just really, really tired. So um, I don't know how he was, but, um, you know, that's definitely a, a situation to look for, you know, especially with a lot of guys getting it and coming back. You know, you're not used to in the NBA season, NBA season having five days off of not doing anything. Um, you know, that's really, really taboo for our career. So um, it's a challenge. And obviously, um, you know, our lineup is going to change every every single night. Um, it's not an excuse. You know, we got to become prepared and next man up mentality. Um, you know, we're all professionals and we understand, you know, when guys are out, you got to step up. And then when guys come back, you know, it's kind of you got to figure out, fill, uh, fill out the game again. Because, you know, uh, from game to game is so different with, you know, who's in, who's out. So. Neil. Hey, Kuz, I think in the second half, it looked like you took a slip on the floor. How are you feeling after that? It seemed like you were favoring your right side, maybe. Uh, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, I had a bad hip. Um, you know, went to the ground. Yeah, I just didn't feel right. Um, I played through it, but yeah, that's what it was. So, How do you feel coming out of the protocol? Uh, I mean, it feels good to be able to come out there and play play basketball again. Um, I had, I think, three days to prepare for the game, you know, after <clears throat> being probably like a week uh, at home without being able to do anything. But I felt good on the court at the beginning. At the beginning, um, I was a little tired trying to catch my, you know, the, the rhythm of the game. But um, but I feel good. Was it the, just kind of having to sit out and not play, or did you have symptoms you had to get over? What? Um... Uh, I was just a little tired and congested the first couple of days, uh, first three days, I think, and then, and then nothing else. But um, it's just staying at home and not being able to do anything for a week. You know, I mean, I'm, I live in a in an apartment. I was doing as as much as I could with bands and trying to work out, push ups, squats, body with my body weight. And uh, but it's not the same. So that was it was harder the first two days of practice um, to get ready for the game than actually um, the actually the game. And that was the reason I didn't play last game, even though I was clear uh, to play. But um, the symptoms wasn't that bad. And obviously a tough way for you guys to lose. Um, just kind of what was your approach on that defensive play and, and um, how would you describe what happened at the end? Yeah, um, we were switching and I mean, they I think they they set the screen with my with the guy that I was guarding on purpose to put me on the ball. Um, I think I did as best job as I could. You know, I contested the the, the step back. He's a good player uh, and he made a great shot. I think uh, if I could come back, maybe I'll make him drive and, and trying to get him to do something else that he didn't want to do. But um I did my best it's tough to, to lose that way. And when you're on the ball, I think you feel like you have a little more responsibility, but um, that's that's basketball and he's a great player and he made a great play. I know you didn't play in the Chicago game when DeRozan hit his, but even though you guys are professionals and have been through everything, how tough is it to essentially lose for the second time in three games on a great shot late in the game like that? Um, it's tough. Um, I think the Chicago game we play, we played better, and uh, we deserved that win. Um, not taking anything uh, from them. Today we came back and uh, we did not play great the whole game. We had a couple two stretches that we we didn't execute, and and they were better than us. Uh, but coming back to the game and having that momentum at the end and, and lose that way, it's it's tough. I mean, both both games were were tough losses uh even more when you're fighting you know a lot of guys with covid and brad today coming out of the game with with fouls so uh when you 
fight so hard to get him back in the game and, and finish that way. It's it's tough, but like I said before, it's basketball. It's a long league. We have to. I don't think we lost a game on that last possession. You know, I think uh, throughout the game we could have uh, played a little better and not put ourselves in that ourselves in that situation, and uh, we didn't. But we definitely gonna learn from that. Being the competitor who you are, how were you able to deal with the the impatience of not being able to even be in the gym for a week? I, I can't imagine what that must have. It's like. hard. Uh, I was talking to Coach Wes, and I told him that was the hardest part for me. You know, after I I wasn't having any symptoms and uh, not being able to leave leave the house and not being able to go work out watching the games from home even though I felt fine uh that was the toughest part for me you know as a as a basketball player as a competitor uh kind of like having that holding you back from helping the team and from competing from playing the game that was uh that was tough but uh you know it put things in perspective you know I uh um everybody's going through that now um I got some time. I got a little break where we usually don't have it during the season uh, besides the all-star break, but um, it's hard to take something positive, but I think that that was the positive for me, but it's very hard to be fine and not be able to compete and practice and, and do what we love to do. Thank you. Thank you. After Brad fell down, uh, was there anything said in the huddle? Was there any message? <coughs> so what was the message? Um, no, I think we just kept our spirit up. Um, I think not only even before he fall out, I think we were all trying to talk to each other, push each other and get a, uh, in a good spirit, even though we were not playing great. And then we got that run at the end, which put us back to the, in the game. Um, but I think it's just, you know, when, when Brad goes, goes down like that and, and uh, everybody else has to step up, you know, and guys have to be more aggressive. The game changes a little bit because um, he's not out there to make plays for us. So um, it wasn't a specific thing we, we said, but we just try to hold our spirit, spirit up because it's, it's tough when your best player uh, fall, out, fall out in a game where uh, the game is so close. Kind of building off of what Josh just asked, I know, you know, you mentioned kind of not being able to be in the gym and the little things you could do physically, but mentally, what's it like being in isolation and just what do you do to pass the time when, you know, you can't be there and, you know, I know it's tough to not be there, but what do you do? Do you talk to people? How, how do you get through that mentally? Um, luckily, my my wife was here with uh, her son. So I had a, I had a companion and, you know, we, even though at the beginning, we were kind of having to isolate and, I was staying by by myself in the room while they were in the living room doing something else. Uh, you just try to stay positive, you know, it's, even though it's hard. I think uh, for me, it's finding things to do and not being all day on the TV and not being all day watching shows and movies because that kind of like, even though you think you're you're getting rest, it, this is like stressing you even more, you know, when you're watching that that much TV. So I was trying to re read, trying to... Uh, uh, you know, meditate, trying to use the time, eat healthy and trying to stay healthy. Um, and, uh, and, you know, just count, counting the days down. Uh, but it's, it's hard because you don't know. Uh, at the point when I tested positive, I didn't know if it was going to take me five days, seven days, 10 days, you know, it's so unknown. And that's the hardest part, you know, because, you know, first day goes by, second day goes by, and then you get some expect expectations that in five days you'll be good and five days go by and you're still positive and you're still uh, having to stay uh, quarantining at, at home. So, but I think to answer your question, just uh, trying to stay healthy mentally and trying to stay engaged with the team, you know, even though I wasn't there, I was watching the games, trying to visualize myself in the games, what I would do if I was in this situation or that situation kind of got me uh, engaged with the game. Thank you. Yeah. Last question to Neil. Hey, Hole. Uh, on that last play, is the game plan and you know strategy from film to kind of give him that shot and give him more space instead of letting him drive? I mean, you can't prepare to a play like that. You know, at the end of the game, we're just playing basketball. I can't predict what he's going to do. I have to try to do my best to straight stay in front of him um it was a tight game so i didn't want to give him an easy basket uh, uh, a easy drive 
so I backed up a little bit and um and he made a great shot um the 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 coverage was to switch on the ball and I did it um I tried my best but you don't <laughs> you don't prepare to a game thinking that the game is going to come down to that that last play and you're going to make him drive uh that's too specific to work and to prepare for it but uh at that moment I was, I was just playing basketball and like I say he made a great shot that's fair. And on the technical that you got, was that, you know, more so just of a buildup and frustration that maybe the entire team was feeling today? Yeah, I got hit in the face on that play. Uh, I was a little frustrated um, for some other calls. I think I got that from, you know, the team was complaining and all that. Um, but I definitely got hit in the face. He didn't see it. I said, it's a foul and slapped my leg and he gave me a tech. So if that's a tech, I don't know. But at that moment, in the heat of the game, uh, with all the complaining from everybody else, uh, he called a tech, and, and that, that's what it is.